hello and welcome to Nathan's Garage and thank you so much for all the nice comments after the last video. I'm walking the bear right now, where is he? Here he is, he's on his way. <clears throat> Remember, merch is still available. Links are in the description below. Head down to Teespring, see if you like anything. What have we got on today? So, we're still on the, um, come on you. We're still on the bed shortening. Now, filming was a little bit bitty. So it's kind of all over the place. And in the early edit, it may take some voiceover to make sense of it. So, here it goes. Right, measurements one more time. So I got this cut from just basically as far back as I could go. So I could weld it, you know, and you wouldn't see it. So then measured my vertical straight edge of this line here. So then on that bedside, the distance from there to there was only four inches. I'm gonna try five and have a more gradual angle on this one. So from the original line, five inches. From here to there, two and three quarter inches. From there to there, four inches. And obviously the cut itself, eight inches. I hope that kind of, you know, when I was looking for guides to do this, I was looking for something really clear on measurement. And I'm not 100% this five inches is gonna work yet because we've yet to see. But as you can see from actually that is, oh, hang on, is that right? I'll check back, hang on. Right, false panic. <laughs> My own crayon work was wrong. From there to there is five inches. So those are the same. So eight inches from there to there, eight inches from there to there. And these angles are the same. And we'll fit together. Came on. Right, the end of the day. I just want to offer it up and go to bed happy in the fact that it's close and workable and doable. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Oh, whatever. I'll figure out the bottom tomorrow. Excellent. See you tomorrow. Right, I couldn't resist just mocking this up really quickly before I go in because uh, I was very excited. And it's the worst bed I've ever worked with by far. <laughs> this is absolutely terrible. This was literally about an inch and a half up. So that's gonna take some talking to when we start welding. Then, you know, everybody talks about this big gap down here and chopping, not the gap, but chopping the excess off, that's fine. And then obviously the big worry or the big, you know, will it work kind of thing is that and it will that will totally go down in line and we'll be able to line everything up very happy uh, that went surprisingly well very happy just getting this clamped up really fought me the uh the inside in there wherever it is the cot um was kind of fouling each other and causing me all sorts of problems, which was making me extremely mad. But we got to this point. Uh, as you can see, I've got one of those miracle clip in there. We've got a little bit of sorting out to do here. We're gonna be pressing and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and then that body line's good. Uh, that's good and then you know we'll sort that out as we get down so we're going to start right at the top make sure everything's bob on and then work our way down slowly very very slowly so still trying to define or find a definitive method of measuring i measured the outside you can see the tape there and i was like i just couldn't find you know straight enough edges to tie up measurements 
So what I did is I measured the outside and then I made the first cut, followed the outside tape and cut through both panels, which gave me a point of, you know, running this tape and it's 12 inches all the way down. It may not be in line with the outside cut, but if you think about it, that's okay. Because as long as this does 12 inches all the way, hopefully, on reunion, it'll meet up. Working at Singer definitely has me on the measure twice train. So done this first cut on the inside. Is it gonna be perfect? No. So I'll just double check my measurements. And look, it isn't perfect because it's not one million percent straight. But now this cut's gonna replicate this cut and that's all you need. That's a bit out. As long as that's a bit out, you're all good. We are under a plane course um so this is going on Got holes here which caused a problem big old dent there which caused a problem dirt in the metal there which caused a problem this has all gone pretty good now an issue we have here is there's been a hit there which has caused more of a concave there which has pulled this line up slightly so what i'm thinking i'm going to do is weld I don't know, a bolt or a post or something there, weld one here, and then put a screwdriver in and like twist it to kind of pull the panel down, which will take the belly out and hopefully line these two up. Being as where I work infects me with a little bit of, we should do things properly, I'm taking a little bit of a detour and reattaching the inner to the outer panel. Then obviously I'm gonna tack that. Then I think I'm gonna tack that at the middle that definitely makes it a little less wobbly. Nice. We are officially at the spot welding and grinding phase, which can get a little tedious and I get a little impatient and then I put too much heat into it and it warps. Anyway, that went on pretty good. That's all lined up. So I thought I'd set this one up here and we can just run round each one and not get bored. Here it goes. It's funny how there's good and bad with both. With Ford and with Chevy. With Ford, obviously the sides don't come off, but they stay square. So you know things are kind of straight. These bedsides that I have, they're so bent and off, it's really hard to see whether stuff's straight because it's all bowed. But it seems pretty good, I think. Think if you look along that line. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, grinding, flattening, welding, more grinding, more flattening, more welding. Actually, going well. So, she's gonna do this. I say real quick, but it's not gonna be real quick. This is the rear cross member that uh, the bed kind of goes onto, and some rocket scientist had welded this end into the bedsides, into the bottom of the rear of the bedsides. So I was gonna buy a new one, but then I thought, nah, let's um, let's just weld, weld the ends back on. And this will actually show you these clips, how they work. So that's the clip. And then what it does, goes through the gap and then holds it on the other side and gives you a welding gap. Obviously I don't need to hold this with these clips right now, but it gives me this really nice welding gap so the weld will sink in and not be so proud. Right, so Wife Tastic has expressed a like for these bedsides. Canarati. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna get those up on the side again, keep going at those to make them kind of artistically ratty. And then this is the rear panel who's edges are welded back on and I've just wire wheeled it heavily and then Cora sealed it. I love Cora seal, it's the best. So any rust just gets converted to this black paintable surface. Don't know what that is. But it's, it's relatively contaminated now, so it kind of works, but good enough for me. Oh yeah, right, more customization. Design wise, as I say, wife Tastic was looking for a post-apocalyptic, distressed, balanced look. Now, 
do we think we've achieved it? I think so. Few more tickles to the wells, and I think I'm gonna hit it with a clear. <laughs> I can hear all you painters screaming out, no! But I am. Right, I've no idea if you can hear me, so I suppose I better turn the camera around. I've got about as good as my patience will let me get on these wells. I think I'm about done. So, I have paint prepped with the uh, paint prep of Champions brake cleaner because I couldn't find anything saying paint, paint prep and I didn't order anything in the week. And then for, I have no idea what it was for, I think it was silver, the Silverado I had. I was going to do a clear. I'm going to do this clear um, straight on. And I've never seen anybody really do it, and there's no definitive answers whether it's going to be a mess or not. But if it's a mess, it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, here goes nothing. Can't take my mask off yet because it still smells. It's spotty as hell, but it's all covered, and I'm just looking for it to be um, protected more than anything. <laughs> I have never used any paint for grown-ups before. Get it from the other side as well. It definitely looks wet. I wonder if it's gonna stick. <laughs> That's insane. Very, very shiny. Huh. It is the morning after. Steve is ready for our heat wave. And the bedside is still shiny. So I'll get it in the sun and see how it kind of weathers. So, well, yeah, it's really shiny. So that's good. Then I got a complete beam up on it about painting this rear panel, which was like probably yay thick in crap. So that's all been core sealed and painted and the ends welded back on, which I had to chop off. Like we have talked about ad nauseum several times. So that's that. Now we are on to a bit of prep Hole welding, bit more rust removing, and then clear this one as well. Right, second bedside done. Looking nice and glossy. <laughs> so filled in the holes on there, filled in the holes on top. Bit of a bummer here because they pinched the two skins together and not supported them in between, so there's a big dip. Such is life. More like big dips are really going to make a big difference in the life of this truck. So yeah, very happy with that. So now, got to figure out how to put things like that back on. Make it look like a truck again. <laughs> so long ago, I have no idea how to put this bed back on. 